Well, good day viewers. Today we have a 2012 Chevrolet Equinox with the mighty 2.4 Ecotech engine. What's with all this Ecos? It's running very poorly. I drove it in the shop. It feels like it's running on three or two, two or three cylinders. Uh, definitely has a miss and low power. Very, uh, very poor performance. So we're going to throw a scanner on it here and see what kind of codes it has to give up. So I've ID'd the vehicle, or I'm about to ID the vehicle. Worked on this before, so I've opened the previous record. It's got 128,000 kilometers, not very many kilometers. Let's do a network code scan and see what is there to report. Customer did say the MIL was flashing, so misfire detected. Cold start, rough idle. Hmm. Well, it's not got it hasn't got any ignition related codes, and I don't see any dreaded cam timing codes. Invalid data received from the engine while the ABS light is on and the traction control and stability track is disabled. Low voltage in the airbag. Lost control communication with the BCM. Uh, that's pretty much pretty much it. Is it done? Now it's done. So the most uh, most likely cause is a ignition spark plug or something like that. But it could be a mechanical problem in the engine. I can't recall if the customer said it happened all of a sudden or if it came on gradually. But they did mention that it's interesting. On the OBD2 side, it's got P0302. Yet in the Manufacturer enhanced side has got P0300. Well, we're going to go straight into the engine control computer. We don't want to clear the codes yet because that will erase the freeze frame data. And we're going to look at misfire data and see if it is confined to one cylinder. So misfire history is 34,722 misfires on cylinder number two. And misfire history on cylinder 1, 1,969, 3, 552, and 4, 787. So it's predominantly number 2 cylinder. And I don't think this is, I think this is live, whether the injector is disabled due to a misfire. So I'm going to save this recording. Normally for a misfire, I'd look at freeze frame data, but this thing is misfiring right now, so there's no point. I'm going to fire it up and look at live misfire counters and see if it shows the majority on cylinder number four. Sorry, it's cylinder number two. So it's misfiring like crazy on cylinder number two. So we're going to check spark. On number two. So take the air induction system off. There's one hose clamp right here and a hose clamp at the air filter housing. Uh, disconnect the mass airflow sensor because it'll have difficulty starting with the mass airflow sensor plugged in. A valid signal but not correct for the current airflow. That will generate a code. Now we're going to take this coil out but there's a lot of debris in here so I'm going to blow this out with compressed air. I don't think it's a primary coil failure because that would set a fault code like a P0352 and I think it's probably the secondary side of the coil that's failed. Let's hope anyways that would be the cheapest thing that could happen to this thing. So I thought before I pulled the spark plug out or the plug coil off would do a, we'd listen to the cranking event on this thing. So I'm putting it in clear flood mode, foot to the floor on the gas pedal and cranking it. Listen to the RPM and the cadence of the engine. So it, it sounds smooth, so I don't think it's got a serious compression problem anyway. So let's go ahead and pull number two coil out. So I pulled the coil out, I checked the boot for carbon tracking, and it's, there's no carbon tracking. I stuck a spark tester in here and adjusted it to about 35,000 volts, that much gap. It's about the width of your thumb. Grounded it. I had to put a hose clamp on it to keep it from popping off because there's a little spring in there. So I'm going to start it up and see if there's spark. Just an end. 
to see if there's any kind of spark. I think this thing's going to fail coil. Well, we'll swap it with another coil and make sure. Okay, I switched the coil from number one to number two. So I got number one's coil in number two's location. So this thing needs to come out. I'm going to have a look at the spark plug as well. So if the spark plug is fuel fouled, I'm going to recommend a set of plugs and one coil. And then we'll clear the codes and see how it runs afterwards. So we have four new NGK Iridium plugs and one new coil. Here's the original plugs taken out and they don't look great. Uh, this was number two. This was number uh, three, actually. I mixed these up. But look at the wear on this one. The gap is pretty wide. And I think these plugs have been replaced because I don't think it came with NDK originally. It would have been AC Delco. It hasn't got that many kilometers on it, so it's unusual for the plugs to be that worn. So I'm going to put the new plugs in and find out what the torque is. So when I put plugs into an aluminum cylinder head, I like to put a small little bit of never seize on the threads, just like that. And thread them in by hand. torque on these is 15 foot pounds so it's not very much. I noticed when I took them out I had to use a, a long 3 8 ratchet to break them loose so they were pretty tight in there. And there's no excuse not to use a torque wrench here because there's lots of room. So that's the, the procedure I used. The torque on the bolt that holds the coil in is 89 inch pounds. When you're installing the ignition coils, make sure that there's no carbon tracking inside here and put a little bit of dielectric grease on there and on the outside edges of the seal surface. And it's a good idea to blow the connectors out in case there's sand or grit in them. And this one's got a secondary lock. Now the coil came with a new bolt, but I don't really see the need to change the bolt. I wonder why they would give you a new bolt with it. So that's the procedure to install the coil. 89 inch pounds on the bolt if you're worried. It's just a quarter inch drive, doesn't need much tightening. Okay, so I'm going to clear the codes out of this thing. I know it's going to reset a mass airflow sensor code, I don't care, I'm going to clear that after. And then we're going to look at misfire counters and it will reset the misfire counters by clearing the codes. And let's look in data now, misfire data. And everything's zero, all the misfire history is zero, so I'm going to fire it up. Well, there it is running, the misfire counters now. Uh, the intake air temperature sensor is, says minus 40 because I have the MAP sensor unplugged right now because I haven't put the air induction system back on. If you're trying to run it without the air induction on, you have to unplug the mass airflow sensor. It'll still be a little difficult to start, but once it's running and recognizes the fault code, it'll be fine. Because right now, there should be an active fault code for it. 
probably two, one for the intake air temperature sensor and one for the mass airflow. Yeah. Oh, a humidity sensor too. All right, so we're gonna put it all back together now and take it for a road test. Now we got it running at an idle now and we're watching the uh, oxygen sensor activity. The forward oxygen sensor should be toggling rich and lean. Low voltage is lean, high voltage is rich. The average voltage will be about 500 millivolts, 450 to 500 millivolts. The rear oxygen sensor, if the catalyst is performing okay, should be flat lined between 0.5 and 0.7. And you can see that it's flat lined pretty good. So one of the problems with running with a failed ignition coil like that or a failed spark plug is that it uh, overheats the catalytic converter. If the computer doesn't detect the misfire fast enough, it, it doesn't uh, shut down the injector in that offending cylinder. And that uh, results in overfueling and uh, abundant amount of oxygen present because the combustion process didn't take place in the cylinder and the catalyst will melt down. So we're going to take this thing for a road test now and see how it runs on while driving it. It seems to be running fine now. So as a follow-up, I just did a network called Code Clear. And we're going to look at some engine data while we ride, drive this vehicle. And we'll see how it runs. So we just came back from a road test and it ran beautiful. No uh, performance issues. Let's see if any codes returned in the computer. No codes. So we're going to call this one fixed. I don't think that driving at the short distance with a failed coil did any long-term damage to the uh, catalytic converter. So we'll let it go. Thanks for watching.